This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about The Burmese Harp from 1956, directed by Colin Ishikawa. No tagline for this film, RJ. Oh, good. I know, impo- impossible, impossible to imagine. Mm-hmm. In the war's closing days, when a conscience-driven Japanese soldier uh, fa- fails to get his countrymen to surrender to overwhelming force, he adopts the lifestyle of a Buddhist monk. The what? A Buddhist monk. Who? This guy. This guy. You see this movie, The Burmese Heart, before, RJ? You know about uh, this movie? I know about Burma. Bur- oh. I know about Ma- Myanmar. Yeah. And I know same. about Burma. Yeah. Trust me. You why, know what they say about why, Burma? Why is that? Why do you say that about Burma? Burma's a Wait, war what? zone. Why is it Burma a war zone? I mean, it is in this movie. It is in this movie, and it is in other movies, too. It's a war like zone. What? Don't go to Burma. Why? What's in Burma? Maybe I want to go see it. You know what's in Burma? Snakes. Yeah, what else? The loan. Oh, man. This feels like this is like a, a review of jo- John Rambo as well. I mean, but there is a lot of overlap if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, if you think about I it. I know that I this movie I don't has, like to do that, though. I know this movie has a, um, like a remake, but I think... By the same director. By the same director, but I think John Rambo is a more... Let's say apropos remake of this film. You know what apropos means, Trip? Mm-hmm. It's a word people use a lot. Like a lot. Uh, yeah, I think Rambo is a way, way more accurate kind of like depiction of uh, Burmese Harp than any of the other things. Okay. And I think the main takeaway is don't go to the war zone. Don't go to Burma. When uh, Rambo tells you that that place is a war zone, Oh man! Listen. You know what I just what? found out? There was an, there's an animated TV adaptation of the story, "The Harp of Burma" from 1986. The harp. We could have watched it. We we could have watched a cartoon. Ooh, that's kind of cool, actually. You know. So the other week, uh, we watched uh, "Fires on a Plane." Uh, by Kone, Kone Shikawa as well. That movie was pretty good. So this is from a few years earlier from fires and uh also in the couple th- things appear here uh ww2 yeah. um sites of war fighting in you know uh the, the pacific theater um my favorite theater type uh, is it? It, it seems like these but it's like these people walking around on bombed out horizons and you know, as a big fan of horizons you know came to my mind at the beginning of this film, RJ? I, I think I have an idea. Was it a man yeah. named John? A man named John what Rambo. Did... Or <laughs> John Ford. <laughs> oh, John Rambo, you say, hey? Yeah, with his eye patch and everything. What was going on with his horizon? <laughs> I don't know. But so what what did you think? That like that uh credit scroll being pulled up and kind of disappearing attempted behind the horizon line and you got to go what is this star wars i mean i this thought a, that for a, a moment but a, I, a, 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 another example of that lucas guy just he loved he loved japanese cinema yeah but i still not, not just kurosawa i mean he did but i still don't think hidden fortress is the inspiration for star wars um, i think don't, don't. Don't start that again. I know. I don't care. I'll go. I'll go against those nerds. Yeah, it's got some stuff. It doesn't have that much. Yeah, not enough. It's like that's no different from saying that like the Big Mac was the inspiration for the Whopper. You know what I mean? Totally different thing. Yeah. Totally so, different. So this movie's based on a children's novel. Yeah. Yeah, by Michio Takayama. For children. Um. It was published in 1946. Yeah, here let me uh, tell you the plot of the the, the children's novel. Okay. Let me tell you if it sounds. Let me let me know if it sounds familiar. Takayama wrote the story wanting to give young readers hope after defeat in World War II by emphasizing the traditional Buddhist ideal of altruism, embodied in a soldier hero, Mizushima. 
captured by the British-led Indian forces following the surrender of Japan in July 1945. Mishuzima is a harp-playing Japanese POW who volunteers to persuade a resisting Japanese unit to surrender. His attempt fails, and in the ensuing battle, he is left behind, assumed dead. Mishuzima takes the clothes of a Buddhist monk, but then reappears as the monk to his former comrades. His comrades, led by Captain Inui, uh, gift the monk a blue parakeet trained to say, Mishuzima, come home. But Mishuzima elects to stay behind in Burma to bury the dead. The title of the 1956 film about Japan's responsibility for the war. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it? In Takayama's novel, one of the soldiers talks of the terrible trouble which Japan had brought to Burma. And the hero soldier uh, become monk, Mr. Zima, criticizes Japan's colonial ambitions as wasteful desires and the Japanese having forgotten the most important things in life, a perspective which is downplayed in the film. Hmm? Um, is it downplayed? I think so. Okay. Yeah. How would you play it? Uh, I'd lean into the, what this this children's book was prepared to do. But the movie wasn't ready. Talk more about parrots? Yeah, more more, more parrot talk. I could have used more parrots, to be honest, more than anything else. So it's well, a I mean, book, eh? yeah, based on that. Uh, so once again, we get Connie Shikawa's uh, really nice-looking, well-shot movies, mm -hmm. uh, this time supplied by one Minuro Yokoyama. Mm -hmm. um, this is a pretty... This movie's longer than Fires on the Plane. Uh, sure. Both movies are pretty light in terms of plot so it's going to be a kind of there's not much to talk about uh in terms of like running through the story but i'll try um well it's about male bonding jared it's about male bonding so we have a group we have a little contingent of a japanese uh, uh troop little group troop company group um troop. group troop like, like the goof, goof like the goof troop oh, yeah, yeah see yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're getting oh, there. Oh, we stick together. Goof tree. That's how that song goes. Baba doo bop. Yeah. <laughs> we could become a goof troop podcast now if this criterion thing doesn't work out. I mean, I, I think it hasn't worked out. So, uh, are we not famous yet? Ah, uh, well, we're the fifth highest rated podcast in the world, or something like that. <laughs> or sorry, top fifth percentile. That means good, right? Yeah, uh, uh, it's better than sixth. Yeah. Okay. So, you know about Burma, RJ? Oh, fuck. Everything I knew about Burma, I learned from a man named John. You know what I mean? Well, every, everything I know about Burma, I learned from an episode of uh, The World of War, narrated by uh, Laurence Olivier. And, man, that episode featuring the, like, the, the fighting of Burma, mm -hmm. where... It's like the British versus the Japanese in this like horrible like swamp land, like mm -hmm. tropical land. It's so like for nothing. It's like, oh, they're fighting over feet. Yep. Like essentially, like, oh, it's like, ah, we gained ten feet today and like sixty people like are being sent off with, you know, mosquito uh diseases. <laughs> we gained ten today, but we lost twenty yesterday. Right, and it's a back and forth, and it's utterly pointless, or nothing happens for days on end. Mm -hmm. uh, and that episode really replicated well, I think, the repetition and terribleness of that particular... I mean, it's all... All war is bad, RJ. I don't know. Is that a, is that a hot take these days? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't say anything that you you can't take back later, buddy. Yeah. Because what about, what about the war, war on drugs? Hey, what is it good for? Ugh. But what about the war on drugs? Are you saying not, that you're not, not, not a po you're not for not, the war on drugs? It, uh, how, how many uh, decades are we into that one? What about the war on poverty? Oh, uh, that's also not going great. But are you but are you for that or against? I mean, that? unless like the goal is to kill the the impoverished, then maybe it's going swimmingly. Well, I think some politicians have said that there is a <laughs> solution. Oh dear. Oh, I'm boy. not going to say what that is because I don't know of such things. I'm just saying, okay. I mean, war is bad, but the war on drugs, the war on poverty, the war on, like, t tomatoes on pizza, potentially. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, so Mr. Jishima, uh, the harp playing soldier. There's a bit of a, a, a musicality to this group. You know, when you're out there in the middle of hell, uh, you got to pass the time. Keep up spirits. Keep them, keep them singing. Keep them smiling. Make them laugh. Make them, make them laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you nerd. Always you talking nerd. about musicals, huh? Yeah. So anyway, uh, they come across a village, and they, they, you know, a scout goes, shit. There's some British guys coming around, you know, British Indian soldiers. Uh, they cheese it and they go, "Oh man, we forgot our ammo in the wagon. We're we we really we've had it this time." But then they are they have, they have a cunning plan. So oh. what they're going to do is they're going to sing, they're going to laugh, they're going to make it make a show of while inside this hut that they're having a good old time, having a performance like they're being caught flat foot. And instead, they're setting up for a for an ambush, a secret ambush inside of these huts. And they finish singing, and they're waiting. And then, what do you know? The British start singing themselves, and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa! What's going on here? Yeah. And there's this tension, and you're like, what's happening here? And then, just before they're about ready to throw down, uh, the harpsman starts harping. And then uh, there's a basically it's like this is enough to like create this blink of a moment where it's like, hey, asshole, the war's over, mm-hmm. your country surrendered, you don't you don't have to die like for some for, for no reason anymore, and they're like, sweet victory, victory or death, yeah, well, no, that's so they go, guys. so anyway, they they surrender to the British, and you know they have to you know go through that process which would be kind of a bummer where you're like all right here's my guns and i hope that you're not going to just like shoot me in the back of the head because you probably could get away with it hopefully you're not homicidal maniac soldiers well i mean you'd hope you'd hope uh a lot, a lot of weird things happen in those uh transition periods that no one talks about i always think that that's one of the uh interesting bits in uh Patton. uh you know, you know Patton. uh Ooh. yeah yeah. Are you talking about like what happens off panel? What happens off panel? But just like nonsense. These weird things where you're like, oh yeah, people can still get like, you know, there's still gonna be people who are like who are holdouts from the war who don't like being uh conquered. Maybe they're gonna take some pot shots at some uh soldier just driving by and then now it's like, well, they gotta track you down. Like it's it's always a weird thing, that fallout. So this film kind of skips that in terms of like what was ho- happening back home in japan this is about just like the immediacy of trend yeah of shifting from being told you have to kill people and once again like ishikawa has been pretty consistent in terms of like depicting people as just people yeah. these are not like his crew i guess like his protagonists they're all like man i can't wait to get back <laughs> so they're not this- pro-war they're not pro-war but we do get that contingent shown to us so um yeah the british of course are like yeah we got like guys like you all over the place but there's ones that are holding out they won't like we have no way of communicating to them because if we say hey your country surrendered you you might as well too Mm -hmm. they're like that that, of course that's going to come off as bullshit japan the emperor would never surrender Mm -hmm. so they're going to send uh one of the surrender guys mishishima the the harpsman uh to go and go up this like kind of rocky mountain face and tell these guys, Hey, knock it off. Quit horses around. Hey, so he knock does off, you chuckleheads. Yeah. He almost gets, sh- uh, sniped off. Uh, but he runs through and they're like, Oh, Hey, these Japanese let them up here. What's going on, buddy. What happened to the rest of the group? He's like, I gotta talk to the captain. I gotta talk to your leader. He does. He says, Hey, we surrendered. And this guy's like, no, bullshit. We did no fucking way. And this is like one of those things where you're like, oh, what if your your commander is like <laughs> gung ho on going going out hard, <laughs> uh, and you're like, yeah, 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 we support you, boss. And uh, you know this guy gets you know the shit beat out of him for his troubles, even though he's like just trying to save him, just trying to do, mm-hmm. a, try, you know, trying to bring save some lives, and um, he fails, uh, and they get yeah. you know bombed. Uh, he survives though. I left for dead. Yeah. What's and of course, like, 
Well, he uh, gets found by a, a Buddhist monk who kind of tends to him. Mm-hmm. And then he wakes up, takes an opportunity to steal this monk's robes while he is bathing in the river. Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of does an impromptu head shave. Uh, have you ever, yeah, have you ever done, have, yeah, that would not be a, not be a, a great experience. Like a, with a Bowie knife and water. I know Rambo d- does that like pretty frequently, yeah. but I mean that dude's jacked. So <laughs> yeah, the the jackness cancels out the pain. Yeah, it does in a lot of ways. No, so he goes, uh, you know, to, to kind of pass around, pass through this uh, neck of the woods. He's like, I gotta, I gotta be a Buddhist monk because no one's gonna fuck with a Buddhist monk. Mm-hmm. And he's wandering around, though. A lot of corpses left around. Big piles of corpses. Corpses? Yeah. What kind? Uh, the kind that eat uh, tomato pizzas. Oh, my God. I know. They, maybe they had it coming. I'm not That's sure. Huge, if true. So, anyway, he breaks. He snaps. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, well... He 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 doesn't stop wearing those robes. So we're kind of like cutting back and forth to the soldiers back at the camp, going like, "I wonder what happened to him. I don't know." <laughs> for like two hours, yeah. <laughs> it's just like a it long goes on extended. For a while. Because you know it's him. It's not like oh he kind of looks like him. There's I don't know. So anyway, no, it's, it's that dude for sure. Here. Yeah, it's him for one hundred percent. And then there's like this thing about the parakeet and then feeling bad about it and like waiting to get home. And there's some reminiscing about like, you know, what was it all for, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but we can't, we can't wait to get back. And they're like not even being treated badly or anything like that. They're just like basically in like this, you know, they're just detained. Yeah. They're this detainment camp, I suppose, yeah. until they get, until there's like a way to like, you know, get them back to their country securely. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of like, yeah, this would suck. This would be like a some downtime. And this guy's doing monk business. And there's like, is it him? Let's write him a note. Let's talk to this old lady to communicate to her that, uh, that to him that, hey, you should come back. And if, are you, if you're who you think, who we think you are, you should come back and join us and uh, come back to Japan, dude. Uh, and then, yeah. and then you find out it's like, oh, he doesn't want to. No, he's. And, He's got to bury He's, the bodies. So, like, this whole, like, beginning part, like, up until when he, you know, transitions to his new life as a monk, uh, is, like, I don't know, 45 minutes total. And then, like, mm-hmm. an hour and 15 minutes is... Is that him? I think that is him. Yeah. Is, Am is I wrong? <laughs> is it him? Anyway. The whole, he, and, and the, the whole time, and the, boss, you got to let him go. It's not him. And then... Wait a minute. Is that him? No, I can't that's him, him. That's, that's him standing by the fence. No, no, that's just some other monk. It's, ah, uh, it's, ah, oh, shit. Anyway, so a parrot comes back. No, I, I'm not going to go back. And then there's a, and then finally he's like, oh, they're run, he's running out of time. His opportunities to come back with us to get back, to, back home. A lot of talk about home. Uh, and there's a letter that gets read on the boat because the guy doesn't come back with them because he, someone's got to bury the dead. RJ, someone's got to bury the dead. Do they though? Uh, he does. It's uh, that's some Buddhist stuff, RJ. You know about Buddhists? Um, I do know about Buddhists. All yeah. life. Do you is know suffering. that? You know that was it? Burma is Buddhist or B- Buddhism? <laughs> I mean, I get it. What is the main pro- pro- proponent of Buddhism? All life is suffering. You know what happens in Burma? It's a war zone. That, that's the one that you like. That's the one you cherry pick for yourself. I mean, that's one of the five. It, it, it overlaps. The, yeah, that's your. Five, that, though, that, 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 that's your. That, but that's the one you talk about the most. I think that has more to do with like your your uh, Catholicism. Well, I mean, Catholic guilt and Buddhist yeah. suffering kind of go they, hand they, in hand. They they, they like, hit it off. Kind of like Burma and war zones. They kind of go hand in hand. Exactly. You know exactly. What I mean? Yeah. So it's it's not a weird thing. It's uh it's totally normal. It's to it's chill. Yeah. It's chill. Yeah. 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 So there you go. Um that's the movie. I don't know why it's two hours long. No, it's definitely long when you watch it. <laughs> and we get it. Um yeah, well, we've we've seen this. Now, 
it sounds like I'm down on this movie. I'm not. It sure does. It's like it's 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 a well made movie. It's mm-hmm. good, but uh, I mean, I I just found I got a lot more out of uh, Fires on the Plane on the whole. Yeah, uh, it's I a mean, bit more I of agree. a. It's got it's got uh, yam talk. A lot of yam it, talk, baby. And and it's, and it's got monkey meat. <laughs> Well, what what movie that's had prominently featured monkey meat wasn't good? You know what I mean? Ex- exactly. <laughs> this this movie not even a single mention of monkey meat to my to the best of my recollection. No, these dudes aren't even starving at all. No, they seem fine. There's right. food ever food everywhere in Burma. I mean, yeah. No. You know, like there's food all over. I mean, there's war everywhere, but the food is plentiful at least. And hey, I got this monkey meat. Really, I didn't see any monkeys around. Oh, they're around. You just, you, you just gotta wait. You just, you'll see one eventually, right, sure. Eventually. Yeah, we got monkeys in Creepsville. If anyone says that they've never seen one, they're just not looking in the right spot. Yeah. I'll get you some monkey meat. Backs. I'll get you some monkey meat right now. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. He. But. <sighs> yeah. So this movie mm-hmm. really well shot. Mm-hmm. Um, looks great. That's mm-hmm. the the Ishikawa touch. <laughs> you know about touches. Uh, no. And um, I don't know about this Burmese harp business. Um, it uh, I follow it kind of follow it all under the same old hat of you know be it a, a movie about uh, Christianity <laughs> like religion mm-hmm. um, or uh, Buddhism mm-hmm. <laughs> like Islam or some of that. To me, I go, yeah, not not for me. Which one do I you can navigate... subscribe to most? None, none of those. Well, that's a that's a religion of its own, you know. No, no, no religion is religion. Do you know what I mean? It's one right. of those. It's one of those cyclical. It's, a, it's about moving on, you know. It's about moving on, and I guess. Uh... They had like even like making this movie. They had to navigate that, being like, "Whoa, you know, Japanese nationalism really dug us uh, into a hole, hole here, and really, really unnecessary. A lot of death for no reason." And then, um, as, as the letterbox hate will remind us, uh, the movie kind of skims past the. I mean, I don't know why necessarily why you would be focusing on that in the Burmese harp because it's not necessarily its job, but uh, atrocities committed, of course, uh, by the. Japanese military, uh, which you know what, most militaries when they're uh, in conflict, they com- they commit a lot of atrocities. It just seems like one the losing side's the one that you you get the prosecutions for, and, and to, to some degree anyway. Um, and then the other side goes, "Who are the good guys?" I know all about this, Jared. Uh, I wrote a an undergraduate paper on war crimes once. Ooh. On a, uh, criminology or psychology of crime crime class that uh, i took yeah took one of yeah. those yeah I, I, wrote a, I wrote a whole paper man i could tell you about it it was pretty wild war crimes it's bad stuff bad bad mm-hmm. juju bad 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 well that's why they tell you not to go to burma i guess it's a war zone you know true I mean? but like the Oscars yeah i don't the know house. yeah Burmese harp is good. <laughs> just, you, I don't know. Did you see? Uh, I, I, for me, Fires on the Plane is just a uh, a movie that, if there was any chance of me ever watching any of uh, Connie Chikawa's stuff again, I would watch that again. I guess. Sure. Because that, there... that movie actually that movie rose in my admiration. Is um, there any chance of you watching that again ever? It's possible. Okay. I mean, it depends. Uh, how long do I have to live, RJ? Let's let's be conservative here, and let's say eight years. Okay, they're definitely not. There's yeah, no way. The amount of taco time you've been eating for the last twenty years, I don't think yeah. you don't make it past seventy. Yeah, so that's what that's what that's what's keeping me going. I know it's keeping you alive, but at the same time, yeah. it's eating out your colon. I think it's. I think. I think my colon's just fine. I'll mind my oh. own colon. Thank you very much. You think about yours over there. I mean, I'm worried about everybody's. Here, yeah, here's like just... I. I can take a look for people if they want. Um, send me twenty bucks. I'll check out your colon. I'll see if it looks healthy or not. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is a new service I, on the I, Discord. Yeah. I, I have to state, I'm not a doctor, just for legality. Just you give me twenty bucks, I'll have a peek, and um, I'll take it. You'll look at someone's asshole. Yeah, I'll have a peek, and uh, I'll just say, uh, I'll say if it's healthy or not, and I'll give you either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> right. Thumb in the middle. Seek immediate Ooh. medical attention. Do you know what Damn. I mean? Damn. So, RJ, what did you think of the Burmese harp? <laughs> Man, I'm scared of Burma. Everything I hear about Burma just paints it like a war zone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's really scary. Did you? So, when did you first watch John Rambo? Oh, I don't know. Ten years ago. Did you ever rewatch it? Uh, nope. No. Don't need to. What do you mean? Don't need don't, to. Don't need to. You want to see babies getting bayoneted and throats getting pulled out of their? Uh, positions uh I, I i think i was good though yeah okay. i was good with the, my one view i mean the movie's only like 92 minutes long i mean that's it's ideal for that's, a second watch that that that's awesome yeah when you grew up was it called Myanmar or was it burma uh i don't know i'd never i mean i don't even know when i first would have heard of it either one way or another but i remember there was the whole thing about burma is now Myanmar, and then there was contention around that i think the only reason i know that is because seinfeld right like, i don't know 95 96 or something if i if, yeah i don't remember that at all it's probably that's probably where i would have heard about it but i would have been like i don't know what that means yeah i mean i didn't I'm... but then i saw john rambo and i said i finally get it ah seinfeld reference coming clearer we never talked about discovery's uh theme song we didn't. You know, that's okay. Yeah, it's kind of there's like, not there's not much there's not much to it. It's kind of like it's kind of like that. Uh, what did I think about Burn Burmese heart? I'm with you. I thought it was I thought it was fine. Um, fires on the plane. I actually like was good. I liked it. We've mentioned monkey meat, yam talk, all that stuff is real good. Um, I don't know. I thought the singing. I get it. I know these guys need morale, but I was kind of like, especially coming after singing in the rain, I was kind of like, what a bunch of dorks. <laughs> like these fucking dudes just singing to each other. And grow up. You know what I mean? Just be sad. <laughs> like, like an adult. <laughs> yeah. Don't try to make, don't try to like lighten this situation. Just be sad. Like everyone else. Um, like everybody else. What was I going to say? Uh, it's got good war stuff. Like uh, this dude does make, um, like he, he does the war stuff well. I think like where he shows, kind of like conflicting sides, and uh, I don't know. His stuff looks nice too. So like the way he kind of films those things, like they're not huge action sequences or anything like that. But I I do think he kind of sets a good context for where the war is, and then he shows lots of um, like we kind of said the uh, like all war is bad, sure, but. Uh, he shows some of the, the some of the real sad shit, like uh, dudes eating each other, or um, you know, mountains of bodies just left on the shore because it's like we're not fucking burying them. Mm -hmm. It's like let the let the shore take them, and it's just like oh, all right, or that's it. Sent or you got to send in that corpse collector. Well, he's busy. He's eating pizza and watching movies in a hotel room. Oh, he can't go. Or, or there's too much work. Or there's too much work. Yeah, a lot of dudes are like. It's so like that's like a whole day's worth of work. I ain't doing mm -hmm. that. I, I mean, when's the last that. time you donated an entire day's worth of work for nothing? <laughs> and not um, and like other, nothing but goodness for the person. I don't mean like a family member, because like if say like a parent or an aunt or uncle's like, I really need your help. You you do it out of obligation, not love. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you just donated your time? Oh, I feel like I I do a lot of that actually. Every Wednesday. For three hours, <laughs> three to four hours, yeah. Okay. Obligation, obligations. Um. Anyways, yeah, I I do like the way he kind of shows that stuff. Like, uh, yeah, just a pile of corpses on the beach, and they're like, we're just gonna wait until in, until time kind of deals with this problem for us. Which I kind of yeah. I'm on board with that too because some I I frequently just kind of let time solve my problems. Do you know right. what I mean? 
Mm-hmm. Like, well, we'll, we'll let the, the moon take care of this one. Let it, let it rot. Yeah, let him rot. Um, I can't remember what it was. I did something really stupid a while ago, and Andrew was like, did you do that? And I was like, yeah. I think I just... I think I like left something on the floor and was like, why'd you leave this here? And I was like, oh, just leave it on the floor. It's the floor problem now. <laughs> something real stupid like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I like that. And I do like, I like the way that he uh, tells stories kind of like within the context of uh, like with war as a background, but like the war is not really the important thing. Like this is just a movie about dudes. And dudes trying to find each other um, in a bunch of different ways. The Parrots was, it's a cute thing. Like, I didn't know it was a kid's book, but once you said that, it's like, okay, I can see the parrot thing being a kid's book. Like, did something like that probably happen? Sure. In re- like, in real life? Sure. But um, I like uh, I like that it's a dudes just trying to hang out. They don't want to leave their dude behind. <laughs> you know? Just dudes. I get it. So I like that. But uh on like other than that though, it's just kinda fine. Like dudes are just singing to each other and they just kinda like hang out and stuff like that. So nothing really like there's nothing nuts about that. It's just a bunch of dudes hanging out. Is that it is that him? Nah, it's not him. Is that <laughs> him? Nah, it's not him. And you're the whole time you're kinda like, Okay. No, we okay. know Okay. It, it, it's him. Is it him? It's not him. Is it him? And you're like, well, okay. So that 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 was kind of annoying, but um, it's all right. It's it's fine. Yeah, I don't know if annoying is the word that comes to mind, but um, for well, I, yeah, I mean, you're watching to, it. To, you're to, kinda, to what end? To what end? Yeah. Is it tiresome? <laughs> is it trite? I think it's like when you have to like remember what you just watched, and then you're like, wait a minute. They spent a lot of time talking about the same thing for a really long time. Yeah. And it, nothing, I don't know, I felt like it didn't really build on itself in any way. It's just like, oh, let's extend this circumstance. And that's it. Yeah, I agree with you. Ch- chop it. Yeah. Got him. Get him. Yeah. yeah it's. Uh, you you want to hear from some people who hate this movie? I mean... No, I used to say, I mean, watching this movie and or, or, or do a lot. I think this movie is more likely to get watched than other movies that we've been watching. That's for sure. Yeah. For, yeah. It's got an interesting title. Um, and it's people love Japanese cinema, but it's not all good. It's not all good. And I mean, we did not do our due diligence and watch the a remake uh, like we used to back in the old days. Remember when we cared? Uh, to do a compare and contrast to see if some uh, 1986 modern film mm-hmm. technique would elevate the story, maybe. I more, mean, for the right or, movie, or make it I'll, worse. I'll do it, but um, I knew this had one. It wasn't available on anything, so I kind of just said, "Fuck it." Yeah. You know, and unless it's placed in my lap, I'm not doing it. But why in why in your lap? Where do you? Why not elsewhere? Movies? Not in my lap. Yeah, you do. You watch movies on your computer all the time. Watch it on my belly. Yeah, my belly. No, you got put it right lap. on. You got put on your lap, dude. Sitting upright yeah. in a chair, or or or, or, or on your on your chest, yes. just sinking, Modoc style. Oh. Modoc. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Big fan okay, of that. you ready to hear from some people who hate this I guess, movie? I guess. Oh man. Okay, so first off, we've got one star from Victor Fifty Two, right. uh, maybe maybe named after their favorite DC series, uh, Fifty Two. Victor Von Doom Fifty Two from yeah. DC Comics. Okay. Um, yeah, Victor Von Doom from DC Comics. You say? Sure. Why not? When World War II ends in Burma, a Japanese soldier separated from his comrades commences a spiritual quest. He decides to remain in Burma as a Buddhist monk, walking through the country and burying the dead. Japanese soldiers lying unburied. He meets his comrades a last time before they return home. He plays a song for them on a Burmese harp, an instrument that he has mastered. He sends them a letter saying he will remain to bury the Japanese dead to create a place for the repose of their souls. The final scene shows him walking away on a dusty plane. Mm. 
technically accomplished, but apparently oblivious to the death and destruction unleashed on Pacific nations by Japan prior to and during World War II. This 1956 film devotes not a single frame to expressing regret for the carnage or sympathy for its victims. Dreadful. He just reviewed the movie. He didn't even mention why he didn't like it. Did he? Well, other than they left out something I thought they should have put in. One star. Just a personal problem. I I mean, I don't even favorite film Sunrise before Sun Set, Blade Runner in the Mood for Love. Person yeah. five starred Red Beard, which I feel like is a little generous. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's not a whole lot else going on with this person. About what about it. with Danny? Danny Boyle. One and a half stars. Dear readers. Mm -hmm. Dear readers, another beloved movie that seems to miss something for me, which is mainly my complete undivided internal attention. This movie didn't grab that. I didn't find any major hangups other than I wasn't particularly interested. Writing reviews is hard. I think to myself, what more could I say? I could think about the cinematography or the power of music or what it means to return from horror. But nothing solid comes to mind. It certainly means something, just not something that makes a whole lot of sense to me. Yours sincerely, Danny Humming. Um, well, I mean, this person has more followers than I do. But uh, their picture is Morpheus from Sandman. And uh, their bio is Avid Hot Chocolate Fan. And 24-7 sentimental bisexual dork. They them. So, I mean, they their patron, they got uh, a lot of followers. Uh, they five-starred a bunch of movies I haven't seen. Uh, they five-starred The Matrix Reloaded. Uh, they five-starred... Uh, the Matrix. Uh, they five starred. Um, I don't recognize any of this shit. Hold on, let's go to half stars. What do they got over here? Oh, I don't know. A bunch of other movies. Yeah. Half starred Elvis. So they, oh, half hey, starred a Crash. Your movie. Hey, well, I'm, I'm I'm not sure about this, but this movie had some brown face, right? I wasn't imagining uh, that. No, I I I believe there is a yes. At least one of these, uh, uh, I don't know, Sikh men. Yeah, very. Oh, yeah, that that dude's white for sure. Like anyone yeah. in turbans uh, that were supposed to be Sikhs or something, those were 100% just white dudes, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. I think. It, uh, yeah, it's a limitation of the technology. <laughs> well, I mean. They were like, well, there's a Sikh dude here. Should we use him? It's like, nah, just get Carl to do it. It's easier. <laughs> paint him up or something whatever well, well Kara man one and a half stars an extremely schematic and and manipulative film you have to wonder how it came to be considered as a classic what does she mean by manipulative I don't know like I'm not sure if uh, Kara's watched movies before but it seems pretty straightforward ty typical typical of movies how they're supposed to operate this person also has in the mood for love as a favorite film all about car Eve. Y, baby. Yeah, all about Eve, Blue Velvet, Double Indemnity. And Ooh, just five starred Usual Suspects. That's the oh, whole uh, hell, hell yeah. In 2023, yeah. Kaiser Soze. Hey, oh. it's like the Shadow of the Shadow of the Colossus, but in, in uh, for, for like for for 1995. Well, I mean, come you on. had to have been there. I know, but you got a double whammy on that. You got Spacey and. Uh, what's his nuts? Brian, um, singer. You got them both. Oh Jared. yeah. Oh man. Remember his wasn't his wasn't his public, but he, we got Benicio. He's yeah, he's yeah. okay so far. Yeah, and um, one also, one of the ba that Baldwin. Baldwin, yeah, he's okay. He's doing good. He's fine. Maybe me. Uh, Kevin I, Pollack, I bet. I don't know. Remember him? Oh yeah, I remember him. He had a podcast. Kevin I don't know if he still does. Yeah. Doing what? Podcasting, living the with a <laughs> the podcast life. Uh, he was in the Grumpy Old Men movies. He was good in those. Yeah, I liked him in those. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, yeah, I think it's still around. 
his podcast or the usual I think so. Kevin Pollock's chat show. Like chat V on on Earwolf. Is that on OnlyFans? Like do you have to pay to be a part of that? No idea. Uh when was the last time there was an episode? I have no hey, idea. why don't you check when the the last uh, time there was an episode? Oh, it's it's now on Stitcher Premium. They archived it. It might be done then. Hmm. Interesting. You should probably check it when the last time there was an episode was for me. Uh, uh nah, I'm good. Oh, okay. Um, boo, Zerdy, two and a half stars. Like a good final act with a couple strong emotional beats and a quite good ending. But the first two thirds were a little empty, a little slow, a little beat around the bush, unfocused. Great choral arrangements of moving songs were the absolute highlights I could have done with five plus more songs through the movie, plus an adorable old lady. Want to hear about Zerdy? No. Born in 1981. I think this has some relevance for movies. I mostly focus on watching movies from pre-2000. I have an extreme preference for the way movies were made in all decades prior, plus the way media corporations were structured changed in 1996 and the entire field of operation even the smallest levels of independent production and forms of distribution changed for the worse and overall i think post 2000 movies are largely junk and i don't have the inclination or patience anymore to sift through it all i am still open to them watch them at times and have watched a fair number and even have interest plus enthusiasm in watching some of them. So it's not an exclusionary uh, thing by any means, but an extremely strong bias against them. Treating this as a 10-point system, all tiers have a 1 to 9 increments that I often will denote, denote in review. And then he explains all of his 1 to 10 point uh, systems. This fellow. Huh. What's this? Worst films that some think are the best. Oh, he, just based on the first five, he's got No Country in there, Children of Men, The Witch, uh, No Country for Old Men, that is, Jared. He's, mm-hmm. This person says is one of the worst, so that's not good. Wait, what? Apparently, in they have a list the worst films that some people think are the best here are some films in here no country for old men children wow. of men the witch dead ringers texas chainsaw okay. uh, barton okay. fink life aquatic okay. north by northwest ex machina okay. the dark knight okay. uh okay. halloween blade runner um watchmen signs that says it all signs Jared. the exorcist it really is. They really got us film bros' number, I guess. Well, they got signs on there, so they knew something. Yeah. I bet you they don't like Sopranos either. Probably not. How'd they, you, they can't you... talk about, but they can't talk about that on Letterboxd. Yeah. What did you think about that review where ba- or his bio, which basically said by, by the year he turned 15, he had cinema figured out. And he's like, nothing, nothing <laughs> will ever talk. I just, I just wanted, I, I, you know, I just let that lie, you know. I didn't piece that together until I was reading it, but he's like, born in 1981, 1996 yeah. was the last year of film, which is like, when you were 15? Yeah, uh, that's about? it. Right there. <laughs> Fuck you, Big Lebowski. I still watch these films. I don't have a grudge against them. I just, I just extreme prejudice. So strange. So strange. Do you ever sometimes read these and just feel like, man, this person really needs an atomic wedgie? Well, I mean, I've all, I've, I've long been for bringing back bullying, but like good heart, good wholesome bullying, not like the no. bullying that caused kids to like kill people, but like, oh. you know, just like how, into how do you know? How, but how, are are you the one who decides? I will decide. I will. Yeah, decide. you'll say this is my kind of wholesome yeah. bullying, like, sugar head. Like once, yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't dump the sugar on his head. That was someone else. But like, I think like <laughs> once a year, being called like an absolute nerd or like i don't know 
get in a butt dart or something like you know i know, I know that's sexual <laughs> harassment now but like it, it might even be sexual assault 20 years ago that was just a thing dudes did to each other it's like stop being a nerd and then you like poke <laughs> your fingers in another dude's butt like it was just it was just the way the way we were jared the way we were. the way we were yeah i haven't done that in a long time though so don't worry <laughs> yeah you ever did you oh, were you boy. guys ever into the butt darts where you know you put your hands together and you just like, whoa, you like slam them in the dude's like uh, area. No, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. Okay. Any final thoughts on uh, this harp movie? Well, all harp? I know is that if you harp. go to Burma, the Burmese harpo. The Burmese harpo is when a couple dudes put their hands together and jam them in your butt. It's a it's a whole thing. And it's a whole thing. Well, man, you, you can. Um, um, uh, after the break, uh, who knows? The cop, the cops are going to be here soon. Yeah, but not for me. I'm a character for a podcast. I don't even exist. It didn't work for Andrew Tate either. Yeah, but all my dialogue is made by that like Chat GPT thing oh, or whatever. So it's oh, all yeah, AI the, generated. AI is the real monster. Uh huh. Go after them, not me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 